Sleeping Beauty's real name was Priscilla and was no beauty. Don't get me wrong, she was very pretty on the outside, but on the inside, that was a different story entirely. Her beautiful blonde hair did fall in perfect curls, but she made two maids redo it a dozen times each morning just to be mean. And while she did have big blue eyes, they never twinkled with merriment. Instead, they glinted with malice and glared with anger. Her pretty mouth never smiled. It was too busy pouting, whining, and yelling. Since the day she was born, Priscilla was absolutely convinced that she was far superior to everybody. And she treated all her parents, subjects, and servants accordingly. She ordered them about day and night, making them run back and forth for her pleasure. She never said please or thank you. Instead, she stomped her feet, shook her fists, and complained about everything. What are you doing? Touch my hair. Nothing was ever good enough. Her meals were too hot or too cold. Her dresses too tight or too loose. The furniture was too hard or too soft, and so on. As well as you can well imagine, not only did Priscilla dislike everybody, but the feeling was definitely, definitely mutual. Priscilla's parents, the king and the queen, were very kind. They loved their subjects and ruled them fairly. They were both extremely distressed about their only child's behavior and did all they could to improve her disposition. When Priscilla was a child, they hired the best storytellers and musicians to perform for her. They brought in other children for Priscilla to play with and filled her room with piles of toys. But Priscilla was rude to the storytellers, broke the musicians' instruments, and chased away the children. She hoarded her toys and asked for more, but she never played with them. The king and queen became desperate. They even tried putting sugar, extra sugar into her meals, hoping to sweeten her temper. But although the court dentist was pre pretty busy, nothing worked. Priscilla's 16th birthday was, was approaching. I'm at my wit's end. We have tried everything we could think of, and nothing has worked. Our daughter is awful. She could never be a good successor to the throne. And no one will ever want to marry her, even half half the kingdom. Besides, she would never accept anyone as her husband. Before we give up, maybe we should consult our counselor once more. Perhaps someone has that on a new idea. And that's what they did. All the royal counselors gathered in the royal meeting hall to offer their advice on this vexing situation. They murmured knowledge ably and scratched their heads widely, but no one could think of anything to say. After 16 years, they were all out of ideas. Eventually, everyone realized that somebody would have to say something. One of the older counselors cleared his throat. He was retiring soon and felt he could take a little risk. Ahem. Let us approach this problem practically. For 16 years, we have been racking our brains to determine how to make Princess Priscilla more pleasant. Perhaps we should approach this dilemma from another angle. What is the princess most pleasant? This was a difficult question. The princess was seldom in a good mood. Finally, after a lot of head scratching, the king said brightly, The princess seemed to be in a good mood when I saw her yesterday. But what was she doing? She was um, twisting the royal cat's tail. Yes, well, thank you. That wasn't exactly what I was looking for. Oh, what's the use? Priscilla is only pleasant when she's sleepy. Aha, that is interesting. Sleep is known to have curative and soothing powers. Maybe all the princess needs is a nice long sleep. gleefully reduced everyone around her to tears by both cruel words and cruel actions. 
The sad parents concluded that a long sleep was Priscilla's only hope. Once they reached that decision, the king and queen had to find a way to carry it out. After consulting the court magician, they decided to throw Priscilla a sweet 16 party. They would present her with an enchanted spindle as one of her gifts. The careless princess was sure to prick herself, unleashing the spell. On the day of her birthday, Priscilla had a great time. During the party, she continued to enjoy herself. While dancing, she stomped on her partner's feet with her spike heels, which she wore specifically for that purpose. When all the guests in their fancy clothes sat down to dinner, Priscilla began to spill red wine and throw food at everybody's seat at her table. The guests were horrified, but said nothing. After all, she was the princess and it was her birthday. The king and queen sat hopelessly and watched while their daughter tormented the honored guests. Finally, the time for opening the gifts arrived. As she unwrapped each present, she made fun of it and the person who brought it. Naturally, nothing was good enough for her, and she did not fail to let everyone know it. Eventually, she opened the spindle. A spindle? Who ever heard of a princess spinning? I certainly don't intend to spend my time on such a stupid activity. But I think I will make good use of this sharp point. Yes, indeed. It will help me make the servants move faster. Ouch! Oh yes, this will do just fine. If the guests thought this behavior strange, they did not mention it. They were only too happy to say their goodbyes and tiptoe out of the palace. Most of them had come to the party out of respect for the king and queen. And while they pitied the poor couple, the guests did not want to spend any more time with the unpleasant princess than was absolutely necessary. After the guests left, the king and queen placed their daughter in the tower just outside the castle wall. They thought that a prince was more likely to touch her arm if he did not have to go through the whole palace to reach her. The queen put the spindle near the bed, as the sight of it made her too sad to keep it in the castle. The king and queen made sure Priscilla was comfortably and beautifully dressed, that the room was warm and clean, and they visited her every day. As the time passed, fewer people remembered Priscilla, and the tower in the wood became the center of many legends. The only true thing that people remembered was Priscilla's great beauty. People added new elements to the story, creating fairies and jealous witches to make it more interesting. Someone even insisted that the princess was cursed by one fairy, when one fairy felt love when she was not invited to the birthday party. And so the sleeping princess became more and more mysterious, until no one remembered how nasty Priscilla had been. About 100 years after Priscilla went to sleep, a prince was riding through the forest around the walls of the old castle. He had heard many stories about the beautiful and mysterious sleeping princess, and as he was rather conceited, he was sure that she was meant for him. He spent days wandering through the forest, hoping to glimpse the tower. The thorny branches tore at his clothes and skin, he and his horse were tired and hungry, but the prince was determined to accomplish his mission, and the horse didn't have a choice. One morning, he spied the tower, which was lit by the rising sun. The prince had hardly noticed the next few hours as he was busy in imagining what the princess would look like and composing what he would say to her. When the prince finally reached the tower, he found the door open. He flew up the curtain stairway, breathless with anticipation. The stairs ended abruptly, and suddenly the prince burst into a big room in the middle of which the princess was sleeping on a large, luxurious bed. Until this moment, he realized he had not been completely convinced that all the stories he heard were true. Once the prince claimed his wits, he slowly approached the bed, shoved Priscilla reverently, stepped back, and waited to see whether the enchanted princess would wake her up. As Lundus said, she would. What in the world are you doing here? How dare you come into my room and nudge me? Guards, guards! He never told anyone what happened. He was sure no one would believe him, or that anyone would, who did would laugh at him for the rest of his life. One thing he did know for sure, he would be a lot more careful about whom he shoved in the future. Meanwhile, Priscilla was becoming unhappier by the second. She soon realized that she was not in her room in the castle and that no one was rushing to answer her call. And she, 
With anger, she climbed off the bed and began stomping around the room. She flung a chair out the window, ripped the curtains, and kicked the night table. Then she noticed the spindle that was left by the bed. The enraged princess grabbed the spindle and aimed it at the window. As she did so, one of the sh spindle's sharp ends pricked Priscilla's hand. Unfortunately for Priscilla, one hundred years had not erased the spindle's magic, and she began to fe feel very sleepy. She rarely had time to climb back into the bed before her eyes closed into a deep, in a deep and peaceful slumber. Here ends the real story of Sleeping Beauty. As far as I know, she still sleeps in her tower in the forest, still beautiful and still unknown. Okay, but